Breakfast ready. You'll be late on the round. Oh. <laughs> 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 so many times do I have to ask you not to smoke when you're dishing out my food. I've now got us all over my cereal. <laughs> Why don't you take that fag out of your mouth first thing in the morning? As soon as you wake up, you've got a fag on. You know it makes you hulk your lungs up. <laughs> I'm going to splat in all over the house. It's disgusting. <coughs> oh, I, I can't do without my morning fag. Sets me up to the death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'll take a picture of you first thing in the morning. Put it on them cancer adverts. That'd stop them. <laughs> Where is the milk for my cornflakes? Ah, uh, it's in the kitchen. I forgot to bring it in. And perhaps you would care to step out to the kitchen and fetch it. This ain't the Savoy, you know. <laughs> I ain't no butler. I ain't no Admiral Triton waiting on your beck and call. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Kids of today. <laughs> Honour thy father and thy mother. All gone up the spout. <laughs> <laughs> I see gold's up again. Yeah. Another three eightpence an ounce. Well, I'm not surprised it had to come. Don't shake it. I like the top of it on my cornflakes. I don't know what you bother eating that stuff for. Financial times, dear. If you was to spend a two bob a week, you spend on that. And put it in my football coupons, we'd stand a better chance of making a fortune. If ever I get so desperate as to do the football pools, I certainly wouldn't do them on your coupon. How many draws came up last week? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. The record number of draws ever. And how many did you have? Yes, shut up. Oh, come on, how many did you have? You know very well how many I had. I don't know how many you had. I don't know how many you didn't have. You didn't have all of them. <laughs> you must be the only bloke in the country who didn't get a dividend. One of these days, the proofs will come up. And when they do, don't you come round on the hero, because you get nothing. Oh, yes, that's right. Mr. Albert Steptoe receiving a cheque from Mr. Iron Andrews for the sum of £192,000, 12 shillings and sixpence. 
This money will not change my way of life. I will carry on being a rag and bone man, but my son Harold will get nothing because I'll give my share to his horse. <laughs> not there. It'll be me and Hercules. You won't get anything. Yeah, we'll retire, both of us. I'll buy a farm, put him out in the field, let him run about free. Hercules, I'm changed. Let him run about? He ain't done any running about in years. He's forgotten how it goes. <laughs> no, I'm mean, sending a shaft to the car to hold him up. Nothing <laughs> you could do with him is take him down to the cat's meat man. Yeah. The cat's meat man. Cat's meat. Cat's meat? Ah, uh, cat's meat. You know. Walla walla cat's meat. Eat brown bread. Did you ever see a donkey drop down there? <laughs> uh, you've taken Hercules down to the cat's meat yard? No, I ain't taken him down. A cat's meat man happened to be passing. He was on his way to a selling flat in Campton Park. And he spotted Hercules and he offered me 25 quid for him on the spot. Why, it's worth it to him, isn't it? I mean, a big horse like that, he'd fill a few thousand tins, wouldn't he? <laughs> Mind you, it wouldn't all be pure Hercules. I mean, they shove a lot of rubbish in with it nowadays, you know. A bit of jelly, a bit of this, a bit of that. Stop it! Stop talking like that! I ain't never no cats eating my Hercules. People and the rotten cats. Why can't they clear off and leave my horse alone? He's going to die a natural death in a field with a proper burial. With his legs folded across his chest like that. <laughs> no, he's not finishing his day. Piled up in tins in some grocery store. That's final. I'm not having it in that all this time. Oh, you get on my wick, you really do. What's the point? I mean, working my love, trying to think up new ways to improve the business, flying through this every day when I'm faced with inefficiency all the time. I mean, you can hardly finish the round these days. If I get around twice as fast with a proper horse. Oh, God. <laughs> the force is a reaction. What can you do? Oh, it's a terrible thing when old drags like you stifles the spirit of progress in us young ones. I know why you don't want to get rid of him. You're contemporaries, ain't you? Oh, you was young together. And if he was the guy to bring it home to you, you ain't got long, mate. You're hanging on, I know. <laughs> Look, Dynamo, are you going out and around this morning or are you not? By the time you come out, it'll be time to come out. Don't tell me how to talk, mate. Well, you can go and get the whole sound up and ready. That's true enough. It'll take me a couple of hours to get him up on his feet. <laughs> you have put the milk in first again, haven't you? I always put the milk in first. Well, you shouldn't. I ain't a proper way to do it. In the correct circles, the milk is always put in last. If I was to take you to Claridge's and I saw you putting the milk in first, I'd know straight away you was lower class. I'd say, hello. He's a right myth, isn't he? <laughs> Men. Milk in first. It just ain't done then. Just a little tip. Try to remember in future. Oh, I just don't. Taste the sign. Oh, well. Yeah. You can hang this up. Don't chuck it under the bed. Hang it up properly on a coat hanger. I shall see you later. Getting above himself, that's what he is. Milking lost. Yeah. Daft. Well, if you don't leave enough space for the milk, you slop it into the saucer. Dad. What's that? There's something wrong with the horse. What do you mean? I think he's ill. He won't get up. Have you kicked him? Yeah, but he still won't get up. <laughs> his, eyes, his eyes are shut. Oh, my God. And he's sweating. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Get some branches, quick. Dad, I was only joking. I'll see what I said about him. He'll be all right, won't he? <laughs> oh, he's been like this before, hasn't he? I mean, he's all right, isn't he? There's nothing wrong with him, is there? Nothing serious. You'd better send for the vet. There long enough, Fanny. He all know what's wrong with him by now. What's keeping him? I'm going in there. There's nothing you can do. It's no good walking up and down like a pregnant father. <laughs> <laughs> He's in good hands. 
Let's go and join another cup of tea. Tea? At a time like this? Tea? Well, do you good. Calm your nerves. Oh, ain't it pathetic? <laughs> your faith in the healing powers of a cup of tea. That's your answer to everything, ain't it? A nice cup of tea. The Englishman's panacea. Mother just died. Oh, what a shame. Have a cup of tea. <laughs> just been run over. Never mind. Have a cup of tea. I have been offered tea for disasters, funerals, operations, floods, wars, Dunkirk, the Blitz, coronations, piles, hysteria, <laughs> hunger marches, insomnia. Nice mug of tea in one hand and thumbs up to the camera with the other. Britain can take it. Well, I can have it. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of being a cheerful, chirpy, cockney sparrow. I am as entitled to be as miserable and as depressed as anybody else. So you can stick your cup of tea right back down the spot. <laughs> If anything happens to that horse, I'm holding you personally responsible. Me? Yes, you. It's disgusting the conditions that animals had to live under. When did you last clean the stables out? Filthy, dirty. I clean that stable out every day. I could eat my dinner off the floor in there. Well, perhaps you could, but the horse won't. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't you start accusing me. I love that horse. If it hadn't been for me, he would have been dead years ago. You never cared for him. You never thought of him as having feelings for the things you said about him. Great clod of you, call him one. Oh, no. And he knew. He knew you didn't care about him. Animals aren't daft, you know. They know when people don't like them. They can sense it. Oh, I've never done nothing against our horse. I've always treated him with respect and kindness. When did you brush him? When was the last time you laid a brush across him? Yeah. Now, when I had him, that horse was brushed every day till he shone. You could see your face in him. And his tail was plaited like a young girl's hair. And two big rosettes over his ears. Well, I take him to collect rags, not to go to a bleeding football match. <laughs> <laughs> and his blinkers, oh, how they shone. The old son used to glint on them blinkers. Looked like he was winking all the time. And I looked after the cart. Yeah, I looked after the cart and, and, and painted our name on it, all fresh and polished and shining. Yeah, we looked a proper picture when we went out of the morning. I used to sit up there like a king. Proud. Proud, that's what it was. And Hercules was proud too, he knew he was good looking. His old neck was arched and his legs gone up and down like that. <laughs> proud. Haughty, both of us. Oh, God. <laughs> the banner of the false pond road, huh? Oh, yeah, you can sneer, but it's not like that now, is it? He knows he's been neglected. That's what's wrong with him now. He's pining. He feels all broken down and ugly. He lost the will to go on. You talk as if he's had a nervous breakdown or something. He's a horse, Dad. He's not a nutcase. What do you want me to do? Put him on a couch and have a chat with him every morning? <laughs> Punching him up won't make no difference. For me, it's dangerous enough getting him up at eight o'clock. I can sure he'll love me going in there at uh, half past six in the morning with my brush and comb and hair grip. Start putting his tail in curlers. I'll get hoofed right up the kilt. <laughs> you never cared about him, and now he's ill. Doc Ipson never cared about him. It wasn't me. Offered him to the cat's meat man for 25 quid. You don't have to bring that up. There's no good of standing here accusing each other, mate. We've got work to do and a business to run, and we ain't got an horse. We're in stuck. And we can't afford to close down. I don't know what we're going to do. Well, you'll have to just go out to the handcart, won't you? You're joking. Go out with the handcart in the winter. Have you tried pushing that thing with stuff on it? Well, you're a young man. What about my fibrositis? You never said nothing about no fibrositis. Well, I have now. I mean, I don't make a song and dance about my aches and pains. I don't moan and groan like some people. But nevertheless, the fact remains, I have severe fibrositis in my left shoulder. I'm not going pushing no handcart. Well, we just have to starve then, that's all. Because I ain't got no money. Yeah. Well, I won't have it the time I paid the vet. Oh, good. Oh, this is a well-organised concern, this is. 
Bomb crisis, and we're knackered. <laughs> <laughs> what about the friendly bits? Where's all the friendly bits gone? Well, I had to pay the rates, didn't I? And, and the street trader's licence, and the corn chandler. He hadn't been paid for three months. You turned quite nasty. So that's it. A thriving business. At the annual general meeting of Steptoe and Son Limited, you are ending 1962, but Chairman Mr. Albert Steptoe <laughs> rose to present the company report. Gentlemen, he said, after years strenuous trading in which smart son Harold diligently flogged his guts out, <laughs> I'm pleased to report that the company position is as follows. Capital held in reserve, one shilling and nine pence. <laughs> company liabilities, the chairman. Rows and assets include a yard full of unsaleable junk and a dead old. Hey, I did. The chairman amended. You just have to work hard, Adam. He added. The report was unanimously rejected and shouts of resign was heard from all parts of the floor. Resign, 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 resign. I get a vet to have a look at you as well. <laughs> oh, dear, mate. As I tell you, if that old snuff said he might as well get his humane killer out and have a car as an old. Because I'm fed up with it, then. I've had enough. I don't want to know. I mean, what is the point? We stumble along from one crisis to another. That horse has brought it home to us. Now we know we stand. Without him, we're lumbered. My future depends on the health of a broken down old horse. A grown man completely dependent on a dumb animal. Very dignified. Yeah, talk like that, Harold. You mustn't give up hope. Hope? I've been living in on hope for 20 years, and a lot of good it's done me, mate. Now, mate, let's all go together. You, me, and the horse. A mass exit of the step toes. Let the council pay for a funeral. Let's get something back for the race. Shut up with that morbid talk. I don't want to go. Well, anything's better than this, mate. It don't hurt. Just one wallop with a steam hammer. It's all over. You won't feel a thing. <laughs> no, you leave my ears. What's wrong with being dead? It's marvellous. No more getting up in the morning. Nice lying every day, all day. No more worrying. No more bills. Peace and quiet. No, mate. There's nothing wrong with being dead. It's a living bit that frightens me. <laughs> yeah. If you're so keen on being dead, why'd you buy that old Anderson shelter when you thought old Kennedy was going to have a go at Cuba? Shaking like a jelly you were. Because I'll decide when I want to go, mate. Not somebody else decide for me. And I am ready to go. Now. Oh, my God. It's a bit... Do you suppose her careers is all right? Or do you think he's passed away? I don't know. How should I know? All right, all right. I'm coming. Oh, there they are. Hi. Harold, look who's come to see us. Lionel Sturgis. Hello, Harold. Hello, Lionel. I've, I've just heard about the old. Yes? A few of the lads were talking down at the yard. He's, he's, he's bad, isn't he? Yes, I'm afraid so. He's dodgy, I think. I am sorry. The vet's in there with him now. Ooh, well, you won't be able to go out today, then. No, no, not today. Shall I have a tea, Lionel? No, I can't stop that. But I've got the awesome card outside. Look, I'll tell you what I've come about. I, I hope you won't be offended, but, well, seeing as how you're placed, like, I mean, you not being able to get out sort of thing with the horse being ill like, well, I thought these might come in handy, if you know what I mean. Uh, they're good quality rags. Mostly cream with a bit of dark mixed in, but they're good quality, and I thought perhaps, sir... Uh, you might be able to place them if it will help out at all, like, you know. No, no, I, I don't know what to say. It's very kind of you. Oh, no, no, I mean, we've got to help each other. I mean, I mean you do the same for me. I mean, we've got to help each other, haven't we? I, I, I don't know what to say, Lydell. I mean, how much do I owe you? Oh, don't worry about it, nah. Buy me a drink when the horse oh, is no. better. No, 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 no I'm no. not going to see oh, you out of pocket. No, 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 I insist no, no. on paying your trade right. Five and a half pound, yeah? That's worth a few bob, isn't it? Well, don't worry about it, nah. Look, pay me when you've placed it. I'm lying a lot. I don't know what to say. Don't say nothing, just copy, that's all. Oh, uh, the rest of the lads told me to tell you not to worry while the horse is ill. They'll let you have some of their stuff. Collect for themselves, 
to look for you. No skin off their noses. Just give them what it's worth at the end of the day. Just pay them what they give for it. All right? We won't forget this, Your Honor. Ah, yeah, that's all right, Albert. Well, I'd better shoot off now. All right. I hope both of these will soon be all right. My regards to you, Mum. What about that then? Yes. Yeah. Nice of him, wasn't it? Yes. It was very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Who is? This is a sin. No holes in it. Oh, you get a couple of niggas down the market for this. Run over with all the iron carp as good as new. <laughs> Hey, where do you get them? We have that stuff like this for ages. It's all good stuff, isn't it? It's all good top quality items. Yeah, you know, that's right. We could do better when the horse is ill than when he's better. <laughs> Harold? How many of the lads gets down to the yard these days? I don't know. But seven or eight. Seven or eight? <laughs> and it's not charity, is it? Not course they ain't. And we'll be paying them proper wholesale prices. And we do the same for them, won't we? Of course we wouldn't have done it until Hercules gets back to work again. You know, that could be a blessing in this guy, though, Hercules, taking sick like this. Once you, he's picked the right time of the year for it, hasn't he? Well, I didn't fancy going out in this weather, not on my far beside us. Yeah, give me a chance to recuperate. Have a nice lying and business as usual. How long do you reckon Hercules will be ill? Oh, what? A fortnight? Oh, at least a fortnight. That's not bad, is it? A fortnight in bed. <laughs> Mind you, we'll have to get up when the lads come round with the rags and stuff. But that's not hardship, is it? I feel better already. This has cheered me up. Life's really worth living after all. Mind you, I, I, I'm sorry for Hercules, of course. But it's an ill wind, ain't it? Hello, come in. It's a vet. Come in, doctor. I'm not a doctor. I'm a mister. They wouldn't have let me practice on human beings. <laughs> <laughs> is he... Is he going to be all right? Have you got a drink or something? It's damn cold out there. A drop of whiskey. Oh, oh. no, you're talking. <laughs> Not a bad drop of whiskey you got there. <clears throat> yeah. You were asking me about something. The horse. Oh, the horse. Sorry. Is it going to die? Die? What are you talking about? There's nothing wrong with him. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with him. He's tired. That's all. Tired? Ah, he's sleeping out there. He could probably couldn't get to sleep last night. <laughs> he's exhausted. I've never heard of an horse with insomnia before. <laughs> if it happens to us, laddie, there's no reason why it shouldn't have happened to them. And that's all that's wrong with him. I, I thought you said he was sweating. He was. He was soaked in it. That was rainwater. I told you the many holes in that room. He could have died of pneumonia. Well, all he needs is a good night's sleep. He'll be as right as night fence in the morning. Tomorrow morning. Uh -huh. I'm ready to go out to work strong as ever. Have another drink. I was hoping you'd ask me. <laughs> uh, I think that horse ought to have a uh, full night off. Complete rest. Well, uh, that's up to you, son. It isn't in need it, but you can your own business. <laughs> All I'm telling you is that that horse is fit to work. Oh, well, the rest are doing good. He's getting old, you see. We like to see him get better prop. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with him, no! That's all we don't want to take any chances. And we'd like you to pop in every day just to keep a check on him. Ah, that's no need. I'm a very busy man. Yeah, well, they won't keep them. Just pop by. Leave your car ah, outside. Oh, there's hell. plenty of whiskey here. Oh, well, I wouldn't have mind doing that. And there's no need to put it around, but there's nothing wrong with him, is there? I mean, it, it, it's of the other traders. Be non committal if they should ask, you know. Worlds with him, worlds, politics. Well, if I don't say anything, I can't tell any lies, can I? Of course, there is the question of my calling, please. We'll see you all right. Good. Well, I must say, 
It's nice to meet people that are fond of their animals. Ah, he's like one of the family. Right, we'll see you tomorrow then. Right. No, that really is a, a nice drop of whiskey. Yeah, isn't it is, isn't it? Yes. Mm. Oh, well, I'll be on my way. I don't make it too early in the morning. No, no. no. Yeah, I would cover up that hole in the stable roof if I was you. Yeah, we'll attend to that. Right, uh, cheerio, then. Cheerio, boys. We'll see you tomorrow. Aye, aye. Oh, well, I'm going to bed. I'll see you in the morning. Oh. Unless the place is on fire, don't wake me up before 12 o'clock. This could be a very pleasant thought now. To sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. How is Hercules, by the way? Oh, he's worse. Yes, I'm afraid it's going to be a long job. You see, he's old. He doesn't seem to have the will to live. Oh, I am sorry. Yes, it's very sad. And the next bit. Oh, yes. There's a good bit of thread left on them. Two bob each, do you all right? Is that all? Yes, well, I won't what I pay for them. What a beauty. Two flowing it is. How's yours? Oh, I was up with him again all last night. Oh, do I have story? Because, well, there's not much we can do. I mean, that's the way it goes, isn't it? Even in the midst of life, there is death. You're all right. Charlie? Oh, yes. Very nice. Uh, would you excuse me a minute? How is he, Doctor? Mister, I told you yesterday the animal is perfectly fit. There's nothing. Oh, in perfect condition. In fact, he's getting restless cooped up in here. He could do with some exercise. Yeah, well, I'll take him for a walk around the streets but tonight. When it gets dark, and here's I'm your a... ten, Bob. Oh, you know, you're wasting your money having me around every day. Yeah, well, I know what I'm doing. Now, will you excuse me? I've got some business to transact. Now, you know where the whiskey is, don't you? You help yourself. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Thank you. Lash the doctor up. Can I have No, one you one? can't. You keep up. <laughs> what did he say? Oh, he's worse. He, he's, he's on the danger list. Can I pop in and see him? No, no, but the doctor says no visitors. Ah, poor old devil. Uh, yes, well, there's nothing much we can do. Well, it's up to him now. All we can do is hope. What was that? Well, it's probably his death throes. Yeah, how much for this one? Oh, give me ten bob. Half a bar, that's very fair. And the next, please. 